Okay, so the battery monitor, that's pretty self-explanatory. But what's a shunt, some of you may ask? Well, basically, by connecting this up to the negative side of the battery, and then the negative side of that to your appliances, what you can do is tell everything that's going on with your system, what's coming in, what's coming out of it. What I'm gonna do is a really quick setup and just show you how easy it is to set up. Let's have a crack at it. Okay, so let's have a quick look at a couple of ways to set up the shunt. Now, first off, what I suggest is we'll grab our little, um, little red wire here. Now, what we need to do, this actually gives you the power for the actual battery monitor itself. So we actually need this to hook up to this to give it power. So let's get cracking. First of all, we've got our little end here. So what we're gonna do is get a really small screwdriver on the little terminals here. We're just gonna undo the terminal. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab the soldered end of the wire. I've loosened off that terminal there. I'm just gonna poke that in. There we go. Poke that in there. Tighten him up. Okay, there we go. And this needs to go to the positive side of the battery. So I'm just gonna um, put that on there as well as my positive side of my appliances. And I'm gonna screw that onto the battery. First up. Okay, so I've got the positive side of the battery done there. Okay, the next section. So I wanna grab my half meter extension. And remember, we do have optional five meter cables for those longer installs. This does, the half meter one does come with a kit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into the little connector here. And you'll see you've got little, your little divots there where it goes in correctly. So just push that in, it'll go in nice and easy. And there we have our end to go the remote meter in a second. So that's all nice and easy to do. Now, your two options with mounting this up. What you can actually do is once again, you can hard mount this to a surface on a wall, on a canopy, you name it, with the screw holes that are in there ready to rock and roll. Or if you like, first off, I'll show you how to mount it directly to the battery. So what we're gonna do is just undo the nuts and bolts. Okay, unscrew that. And there's our shunt ourself. And there's our mounting bracket. As I said, use your imagination. You can mount that anywhere you want to. I'm gonna screw this directly to the battery terminal for a nice, easy installation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, we'll work with the nuts and bolts we supply. Depending on your battery supply, make sure that it's the right length. But the easy way, for, especially for all your kick-ass batteries, what I'm gonna do is do the nut and bolt up. Just to act like a bit of a spacer. So that's nice and tight. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna mount this directly to the negative battery terminal. So remember it has to go on the negative terminal, so I'm gonna screw that down. I'm just gonna tighten him up, 14 mil spanner. And there we go, our shunt is mounted to the negative terminal. All I'm gonna do then is I'm just using one of our kick-ass MaxiFuse holders. Um, these are great for a nice, easy installation, running all your other items like your fridges, your camping lights, you name it. I'm just gonna then bolt that directly to the shunt. Two 14 mil spanners. So there we go, there's our installation. I've got the shunt onto the negative side of the battery terminal. I've got our harness plugged in. I've got our power lead to the positive side of the battery to power up our display screen. Now the only thing left to do is actually plug in the display screen itself. Now the beauty is you actually have some little divots there that actually you can't mark up where the plug goes either. So it's really nice and handy. I'm just gonna connect that in, screw it up. And look at that there, we have a full battery monitor system, a 500 amp shunt, ready to rock and roll, and be in control and be able to measure everything coming in and out of the battery. How cool is that? Let's have a quick look at the second way to mount it up. Okay, so what we've got here, once again, this is the direct way to mount it to the battery terminal. I'm gonna show you the second way, which is using a cable, and I've made up this little cable. Um, you can make it um, whatever length you want. Obviously, you probably want it as short as possible with, with as thick of a cable. So let's quickly remove this, and I'll show you how that works. So we're just gonna undo the battery terminal bolt. Remove that. 
And then with the original battery terminal bolt, I'm gonna put on my little cable here, do it up nice and tight. There we go. Now, what we need to do is with the nut and bolt that we supply her, is I'm gonna put that through there, through there like that, and screw him up. Okay, so once we've mounted that to the battery, from a cable to the shunt itself, and then we've got our, all our accessories coming off the shunt. I'm gonna connect our meter back up to this one here. And look at that, once again, we're ready to go. So there's the three ways that you can mount the shunt to the battery, either using the bracket, either by directly mounting to the battery or remote mounting it with another cable like that. It is so easy and so cool to do, you ripper. So last but not least is the temperature probe. You can put it on the battery terminal if you wanted to or close to the battery to get an idea what the battery temperature is. You know, for this little install, I'm just gonna put it as close to the negative terminal as I can. I can keep an eye on you on battery temperature if I need to. Okay, so here's a quick example of how the um, battery monitor is gonna actually work. So I've got my kick-ass oven plugged in at the moment. And if you can see there, I'm pulling around about 10.9 amps out of the battery. It's telling me my battery's almost fully, fully charged. Um, but there you can see, it gives me my battery voltage, tells me what the ambient temperature is. Now what I'm gonna quickly do is, yes, so I'm currently using 10.9 amps on my oven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my battery charger in and this could sort of simulate a solar panel or something like that. Now, once the battery charger kicks in, we'll actually see um, it change from using 10.9 amps for the oven to compensating for the amount the oven's drawing and the amount of charge going in. So if we have a quick look there, it's gonna to start to change. And there we go. So we're no longer drawing 10 amps. We're only drawing six amps out of the system because I'm putting charge in. So it's gonna give us the calculation on um, both coming in and out. So that's where it comes in really, really handy to be able to see what's going on. So as you can see there, you've got your, um, the oven was using 10 amps, a little over 10 amps. Now I've plugged my charger in and now the charger is compensating. As you can see, we're only using 6.9 amps. So that's where it comes in really, really handy. It's actually telling you the difference of what's coming in and coming out to let you know exactly what's happening. How cool is that? Okay, thanks so much for watching the video. There's three ways on how to mount the 500 amp shunt. Um, head over to the website and check them out now, you ripper.